Well, dogs bring so much love and comfort into our lives. The least we can do is keep them happy and healthy for as long as possible. Rodney Habib, the founder of Planet Paws and author of The Forever Dog, joins us with uh, tips and tricks to increase the lifespan and quality of life for your forever friend. Thanks so much for joining us, Rodney. Thanks so much for having me, Bob. Have you still got your spot in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia? I still got my spot here all the way in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Even though you're a huge international bestseller now because a lot of people <laughs> are interested in this, what got you interested? You know, Bob, it was the age-old question, how old, how old can dogs actually live for? I mean, this was always one of the, the biggest fascinations for me. And when we started to travel around the world looking for the oldest lived dogs, I mean, it was the biggest surprise in the world to see that some of these dogs can live well into their late 20s and early 30s, which started the whole journey of how is this actually happening? I remember there was a Kelpie in Australia, I think Maggie, who was 30 years old, world record. Maggie the Yes, Maggie, the 30-year-old Kelpie. We flew down to Australia. We got to we got to sit with uh, Brian McLaren, the dairy farmer who raised uh, an old lived dog like that. And that was one of the sort of the the spark to the journey. We went to Hungary where we got to meet 27-year-old Bushki, 25-year-old uh, Bramble from the United Kingdom. So we collected all of this data, Bob, and we headed out to the world's top geneticists, longevity scientists, uh, some of the most incredible and brilliant minds around the world to help break it down into gems and put it into writing for today's pet parent. So what did you learn? My gosh, so many things. I think the biggest thing for me, the biggest aha moment was what's going on within the homes, right? Stress plays such a critical role today. Of course, we're all going through a terrible time. Um, and this stress, according to Swedish scientists, can actually transfer over to your dog. Your dog will sync up with your cortisol levels. So it's never been so important within the homes today to try to you know, do things to alleviate the stress within the household. And then chemical stress within the household is pretty bad today. As in sanitizers? You got it. We all want a clean home. It's yeah. pumpkin spice it's, season. It's the Everybody dog's fault, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're constantly Ab cleaning after Ab them. So, absolutely, but it's so important to know what's in those cleaners. Right. According to some of these scientists, those cleaners are building up within our dog's system. Let's talk about food. Um, it's not good to feed your dog. I mean, I have three multi-poos, and it seems like on a regular basis, every three months or so, we'll get a little multi-poo prison hunger strike where they're just, <laughs> they just look at their bowls and then glare at us. But it, right. it's important, actually, to change it up, isn't it? Absolutely. It couldn't be more critical. Sitting with some of these microbiologists, they would always tell us that the most diverse GI systems in the world are those usually held by the longest lived people. And the same hold true with our pets. You know, you really want to be adding fresh food into that bowl as much as you can possible, starting with teaspoons, right? It's critical today to bring in diversity into that bowl. And, and that was one of the key things that we heard from scientists is a lot of people will be heading out, grabbing sort of like these packaged products and these processed foods. And we know today, you know, you want to eat less and you want to try to eat as much as fresher as possible, which is critical. Yeah. Now let's talk about those uh, super processed foods because we tend to, you know, we'll mix in uh, meats with, with some dry kibble. But it's important to look where that kibble is coming from, right? Absolutely. You know, it's it, we, the same would hold true for, I think, even for humans and for children, right? I mean, your your mother and your great grandmother would always tell you, you know, try to keep as much processed food out of your mouth and try to add some things that are fresh. In fact, Purdue University, the veterinarians over there and the scientists want to know just how important it is to add a little bit of fresh food into a bowl of like dry kibble. They found that adding vegetables just three times a week to a bowl of dry food was able to reduce the risk of bladder cancer by 90%. What do you think of raw foods? I think the, it's an incredible market today. I think that if, as long as these foods are balanced properly, they have to be balanced and formulated properly. I know that there might be some people at home that might be immunocompromised, so you can buy now sterilized foods or pasteurized foods and things of, and so on and so forth. But I am a huge advocate of fresh food, and so are a lot of microbiologists. In fact, most of the microbiologists we spoke to are feeding some so, sort of live fresh food or adding it into the bowl of their dogs and cats bowls. Okay. Now, we, we do walks and go to the dog park, but but our dog's favorite exercise is cuddling. But how important <laughs> is actual exercise? Listen, if you had no money in the world, the most important thing that you can do to help increase the health span and lifespan of your pet and even yourself 
is movement. Get out and exercise. When we sat with some of these long, these owners of these long-lived dogs, these dogs were getting at least two hours of exercise a day. Of course, if you have an animal that's like older or injured, this is where you really want to sit with your veterinarian. There's incredible things out there like underwater treadmill and so on and so forth. But moving around in the park, getting out into the woods, according to microbiologists, you're sharing the biome of the woods with your animal. You can actually decrease the likelihood of allergies by just getting out and walking in the woods a few times a week. Interesting stuff and lots more in the Forever Dog. So we have seconds left, but how do we get the book? So foreverdog.com, I know it's sold out in 90 seconds, but they're telling me that it's now making its way through North America, so we have links on the foreverdog.com. And we'll put that at chh.com. Rodney Habib, thanks for joining us this morning. Bob, thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure.